Doing well. Had a wonderful time last night at the uh, SAFC uh, Christmas season ticket member party. Uh, it was fun to get to see everybody. Uh, got to see uh, Miss Danielle. Uh, didn't get to see Rafa or Scott, but, you know, hey, half of us were there. Um, and the other half, uh, I'm not sure where were you guys were. Where were you, Rafa? Uh, we were having fun last night at Ferris Stadium. Where, um, me and Scott were braving the, the cold. <laughs> We're the troopers for UIL high school soccer, which <laughs> we have a lot of discuss today. Go ahead, Danielle. Uh, so I'm excited. I didn't even share this with you guys. I bought my very own first tea set. And of course, it's Downton Abbey themed. So I've never hosted anything, but I felt that I had a tea set. Therefore, I had to host a tea party. So I'm having my first tea party and I'm making a cake, which me baking is usually a disaster. So it may end up being pizza or whatever can <laughs> Uber Eats. So we'll see, but we will have tea because I have water and I have tea bags. Um, but I had fun last night. It was great seeing everybody in our SAFC family at the STM event last night. Um, and great seeing all the fun stuff. Shout out to Ellie Cook, my favorite season ticket rep ever. <laughs> so uh, i guess the next uh next uh podcast will be at, at your place and we can all sip on some team with our fingers out is that, is that how you do it you can look <laughs> tea and crumpets tea and crumpets official, official downton abbey the earl gray tea except i'm having the downton abbey gin now so we, <laughs> we can alternate Save that for the show. Uh, always saving the downtown Abbey gin. Uh, sorry about that. Just a, a minor quick emergency all taken care of now. Uh, but uh, let's start off with uh, last night's game. Me and Rafa were uh, sitting out there in the uh, beautiful, beautiful Texas high school soccer weather. Uh, as always, Thomas St. George, thanks for checking in. How you doing, buddy? Uh, but we got to see a, an early preseason match versus... Uh, one of the stronger teams typically here in San Antonio versus one of the Valley teams. Uh, it's always a fun rivalry in Clark versus uh, United Laredo South. So, uh, Rafa, I'll let you kind of take it away a little bit just kind of with, with your thoughts from the match. I know we discussed kind of their formation, how they looked when they were first starting off in the first half. So so start us from the beginning. Well, this is a, was a real intriguing matchup. You know, normally you don't get to see teams like from Laredo play San Antonio. And, you know, Clark has their history with their soccer program. And then United South made a lot of noise last year, knocking off um, one of the top teams in the Valley, which was Lincoln Juarez. And then it took Hannah to the limit in overtime in the, the second round of the playoffs. So. I had a kind of little experience knowing what the United South had to bring and it was exciting to see both teams to see, okay, two different styles of play to see how they match up. And, you know, we noticed that Clark's came in out with a 4-4-3, you know, 4-3-3, and United South came out with 4-4-2 with a kind of diamond formation in the back. And I was surprised, uh, the, as far as the result, I was surprised, you know, United South really took it to Clark and they touched the ball with the ease back and forth, even with the win and against the win. Um, I know they got a PK early, which should have counted because we saw the replay <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> there was no VAR, but they dominated the whole game and Clark just kind of, I mean, they had a good shape defensively, but they just could not muster any attack and, Usually when a 4-3-3, you go press or defense and try to create chances. But, you know, kudos to um, to United South. Um, I'm, uh, number seven, Justin, uh, we didn't get his last name, but he had a hat trick last night. Uh, I th actually, he could have had four goals. I think he missed PK. the one. <laughs> well, and that post yeah. last night, too, was almost that goalie's best friend, right, for mm -hmm. uh, Clark there. I, I think the, the post had just as many saves as the keeper did, not taking anything away from – the performance of the goalie there for Clark, but uh, just kind of getting back to them and everything, they looked a little bit young. It's a preseason mm -hmm. game. You know, we talked about uh, coach trying to get minutes maybe for some of the new players on, on his squad, but they looked like a little bit of a younger squad, didn't they? Yeah, th you can tell that they're a little, little green. So this may be a rebuilding year for Clark, um, you know, but they did, did a lot of switching around. On, I guess, you know, normally these games, you just – 
you want to find the right combination of players, the right rotation as far as substitutes. So I, I'm sure he's probably going to look, the coach is probably going to look back at the tape and see, you know, what they did right and what they did wrong, you know, what, you know, there, and there's a lot more to improve on, but I'm sure them playing a couple non-conference games and I think they're going to be in, in one of the tournaments pretty soon. Hopefully that'll give them some experience because with Northside, they do start district right away with their 10 teams mm-hmm. and there's really no room for error in the district play, you know, since there are only four spots going to the playoffs. So, you know, Clark does have a lot to work on, but I do see there are some talented players on there. This is, it's going to probably take some time because it looks like they have very have a big youth movement going on with their team on the flip side with the Liberty United South. Um, no, kudos to them. You know, they played a great game. There you go. And I, now I see kind of why they knock off uh, Lee Compartis and took Hannah to the limit. So they may be a dark horse to maybe to come out of that region. They got the players to do it, they especially number seven. Um, I know they were missing a couple of players. I don't know one of them because I do coach one of them. <laughs> he was out sick. <laughs> <laughs> and then one of my other, one of my starters from my club team, He's a, he was starting center mid for, for them to – you know, he did a great job out there. So I can tell they're going to give, you know, they're going to give 29-6A a good run for their money. I think they'll contend for their, you know, for the district title, uh, which has been dominated lately, been, been United and LBJ. So, but, you know, good luck to both teams. And like I said, hopefully, like I said, it was, it was a good matchup. Just, to, you know, kind of start up for them. And we'll see what other matchups we have coming up pretty soon. Yeah, and we got Some a couple Rafa. questions from uh, yes. and I, Real quick, I will confirm, Rafa, um, I'm friends with the head coach of the Clark Boys team, and he was talking that they have a lot of young players, mm-hmm. and he's going to give a minute. So whoever's working mm-hmm. in practice, you're you're earning your yeah. spot. So oh, yeah. ab- absolutely 100% what you're seeing on the field is is what's going on in practice. I told him yep. you should have the referees come out and run a foot race with his players because some of our referees will run you silly and – One's running a marathon, and he just decided it like the other week. So um. I like the way they did play as far as their sh- they kept their shape, and that's something that's really hard to coach. I think the mistakes they made is just because of inexperience. But I think in time, I think he'll just working with them and them getting minutes and so forth. They'll get it together. You know, I, I mean, I think they have a legitimate shot to getting maybe that fourth spot, the last spot in the playoffs for that. Day. District. So, you know, it's, I, I think they can do that. It's going to take some time, but like I said, and for their district, you know, you have contenders like O'Connor, Randice, Marshall, especially Jay. Jay's, Jay's been the big dog. You know, it's going to be a fight in that district to get you know, one of those four playoff spots. And we got a question here from CJ. He was asking about Walter Rule uh, still being at Clark, Coach <clears throat> Rule, and, and no, uh, we were talking about that last night. Coach Rule is no longer there. It's uh, Coach John Villalobos that's there right now. Uh, Rule went back to uh, Antonian, didn't he? San Antonio now, yeah. So, yeah, there was a little switch. He, he was there for a little while, but now that his son's gone, uh, looks like he's gone back to Antonian. <laughs> so, uh, good question there. Uh, but, yeah, so kind of a little bit of a rebuilding year there for the, for the coaching staff as well. But, yeah. Um, as you mentioned, you know, that they, they did a great job keeping their shape kind of in that first half. And in the second half, you know, just a few players kind of lost some of their marks and everything, which really led to those three goals that you talked about, uh, all three of them uh, against the wind, surprisingly, and all three of them on through balls. They're just kind of picking apart that back line uh, to number seven, who ended up getting the hat trick there. And uh, also, CJ, yeah, to your point, uh, they traveled all the way from Laredo on a school bus, and we were talking about that after the game. Uh, some of those school buses, you know, are limited to 55 miles an hour, so that turns that three-hour road trip into four hours real quick. Uh, and they even stuck around after the game and, and practiced PKs because we knew that was an issue for a Lee, apparently, last season. So uh, some of these teams and some of these scrimmages opt in to uh, just practice their PKs after the game. So it was a pretty late one out there for those boys hopefully got some homework done i'm sure on the uh, bus on the way home uh, but we did have a couple questions that, that came up last night for you danielle from a a refereeing perspective uh i think it was the first time i've ever seen a official get involved in a play where the ball deflected off of the official 
Uh, Clark lost their advantage on it, and he actually blew the play dead and awarded a drop ball to Clark, which I had never seen before. Is that? I just want to make sure that wasn't some official rule change. So for USSF, it's an official rule change. Um, actually, it happened to me in a game the other day. Get out of the way. It skimmed off my leg. I could not get out of the way of the ball. It fell right to the opposing team and best player on the team. And she took it and scored. And they're like all looking at me. And I'm like, I'm like a post. Bounces off Field me. Of play. So USSF made that change. Um, you you can. I mean, um, but. It's a scrimmage. Uh, I mean, at the end of the yeah. day. Yeah, so I was just wondering, state and, championship, and, if we see that, you know, are they going to blow it dead and award a drop ball? Because if I'm the no, opposing coach. Let me tell you, this, the state referees we're already going through, um, we have to pass a actual written test with a 90 or better. Wow. We have to pass a physical fitness test. Um, and then we also have several other like chapter and local requirements and videos okay. we have to watch. So you usually get some of the best. Um, usually it's some people. Some of the guys last season are like the UPSL refs. So high quality people who know what they're doing. But yeah, you, you probably won't see that. It's preseason. It's cold. We do crazy <laughs> things. Let me tell you. Just I'm not going to sure. lie. I, I randomly will be like, oh, yeah, let's just call that. And I'm like, no, it's cold. I, I think you made the right kind of like the right call, you know, giving them the ball. I mean, I think he just did it by accident. You know, normally he would just let the play go, but I guess does a little. I guess the cold man blow the whistle. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> felt bad. You can you can tell. We have hearts underneath the the stripes. We have hearts. The, absolutely, absolutely. So would you be assisting this? Yeah, that's a good question, Danielle. Uh, CJ again. So did you get an assist for that with the uh, the the incident that you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I did. I did. I went on the official score sheet. <laughs> Wrote yourself in. <laughs> that was nice goal, too. I was like, oh, I'm not going to I can't take can't that take away. That away. <laughs> yeah. Very cool. Well, no, we're, we're looking forward to uh, catching some more preseason games and stuff like that. Uh, Rafa and I were looking at the schedule last night and uh, circling some of them on the calendar. So, uh, you know, excited to be bringing you guys some more news on that as we get a little bit more into uh, some of the tournaments and everything like that coming up. Anything else that you wanted to mention as, as far as last night's match, Rafa, or just on the high uh, school scene? I mean, this is, like I said, it's preseason. It's just for them to get their feet wet, you know, what, what works, what doesn't work, what kind of player rotation – Give some experience and so forth. So, you know, it's, it's, I mean, I went through when I coached high school, you know, didn't care about winning or losing. It was more getting reps and see what, you know, what works, what doesn't work, and who really needs to be on the varsity and who doesn't need to be on the varsity. Well, you know, like we you said, made our final cuts right before our first official game. But yeah, looking towards looking for the season, there are some big games coming up. You know, we saw one, like I said, Lee versus Central Catholic. Uh, we saw Reagan, they're going to go up against Central Catholic and a couple other ones. Some, you know, we have some teams in the 5A district or like Alamo Heights have some big, a big game with Jefferson and, and so forth. So we'll be look. you'll see us out there. Hopefully say hi to us and you know, we'll report back and. Yeah, you saw the picture. We'll be in the parkas and in the round table all bundled <laughs> up with lots of hand warmers. So uh, come find us. But, yeah, I still question your guys' decision with the SAFC watch party or the season ticket party had free alcohol in it. Um, so that would have kept you a little bit warmer um, or free soda there for Rafa. So, or, free yeah. ho- or free coffee. Which out, I or free coffee. Out there yeah, for the love of the, the game. Hey. Last night. That's where we were missing hot last cocoa. night. We didn't get the yeah. No concessions. That's right. So, uh, no, we're uh, excited to continue to follow that and uh, bringing you guys all the action and everything from the high school scene. Um, high school tournaments that are must-see, uh, the big one really and truly uh, is uh, up there in North Texas with the uh, Elite, Tex- or Nor- uh-huh. Elite Texas Showcase tournament that uh, Coppell High School hosts. I know Central Catholic was up there last year. Um, there are a couple of tournaments down here, though, in San Antonio as, as well. Uh, there yeah, was... Go yeah, ahead, Rafa. The North Side, yeah, the Northside Showcase, that's coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll be playing games at Gustafson at Ferris. Um, we also have um, one the week after that in action in Austin, which is going to feature some of the elite teams, like United South is going to be there. But I don't know Lee was going to be there. I think Reagan is going to be at the Lake Travis Austin Westlake Showcase. So we're bringing a lot of the elite teams 
the that, southwest one too it seems like he has a, has a mixture of the the san antonio schools as well yeah saisd uh, has uh, saisd has a tournament mostly with all the 5a teams uh alamo heights has hosts their own they usually bring some teams from like the dallas area um corpus and other places other places so you, you got that first week the first weekend in the in january you're gonna have a lot of good tournaments here in san antonio so go check them out come go support your team and like i said you, there'll be some fun action and then we got said we got some good matchups on non-district some non-district games that are coming out that we've looked over the schedule so we're looking forward to you know Jeremy just brought up one, the Reagan Central Catholic. That'll be on uh, January 22nd, I believe, is that matchup. So, um, yeah, we'll keep you guys uh, in the loop on uh, all of those coming up, and uh, should be some exciting games. And buy your referees some hot chocolate. Or... And buy the referees some they hot like chocolate. That. They really do. Even, even if they, they get in the field of play and uh, interrupt a, a goal-scoring opportunity, still give them the hot chocolate. And then it's turn around and assist on a goal for the <laughs> Yeah. Well, moving along, uh, it was kind of an interesting week as well in the uh, UPSL news. Um, we had a, a playoff bracket kind of get released and, and then uh, a little bit of a change in, in some of the point scoring system uh, where it's not quite over yet, um, especially with the result of the Coyotes and Corinthians game mm-hmm. ending in a draw. Uh, Harry, just uh, explain to us the way that the standings work, because I think there was a little bit confusion where a lot of people thought that goal differential right now is a determining factor when when points are still obviously the uh, primary source for uh, who's going to get that number two spot. Yeah, so Alamo City's locked in right. uh, to the number one. They're clinched. They're done um, for here. But the, the season really comes down for the runners. They're at 18 point, uh, points with the goal difference of uh, plus 24. So really goal difference isn't going to come into, into place. Um, Coyotes plays at Capital City this this uh, Saturday. Um, Cap, uh, Coyotes need a win because uh, with the tie, because they're only at a plus 16 mm-hmm. on goal difference uh, for that here. Uh, so if they win, of course, they're at 20 points, so they're ahead of them. If they tie, obviously, they're going to be short on, on goal difference. So it's, it's a win and in uh, for Coyotes against uh, Capital City. Um, there was some minor drama, you know, last week that kind of got work, you know, worked itself out, um, you know, where Bell County ended up, you know, forfeiting its its last three uh, matches, which, depending on your your view, I think was probably the right decision. Um, you know, I know I talked kind of with Mason, you know, who was supposed to go up. I know the Coyotes were supposed to go up. Um, you know, his point of view was, hey, getting minutes for the players um, is important. Um, and, you know, outside of the financial aspect, you're paying for games that you're not getting to play. Um, you know, so, but to me, my point was, you know, you know, you're going in there winning at least 20 to nothing. Um, and then the Coyotes were going to have to turn around and do the same thing. You know, I think they were going to play them on Sunday. So um, is that really a good look for the sport? So in my opinion, you know, like I said here, you know, having Bell County, you know, forfeit the last three games, it was probably, in my opinion, probably the right thing to do, you know, for the league because, you know, they're already at a negative 127 goal difference. You know, you don't need to, you know, pound them even more. And, you well, know, we you know the runners. And take, ca- you knew that was going to take place after the first three games in the season. It's not like these last three yeah, games were any different. So, I mean, I, I guess the way that I look at it is, you know, we had kind of given them credit for sticking it out, playing the season. So by bailing on the last three games because you know your playoff hopes are over and, you know, you just know you're going to get beat, they knew that after the first two games in the season when they were losing 20-0 to zero and 17-1. to one. So, I mean, it, to me, it just kind of, why not yeah, finish but... out the season or why not make that determination a little bit earlier when you realize that, hey, this team's not going to be competitive because now that they've played half the season, the games stick – and it feels like to me that's what you did was basically tell them, no, I'll keep playing until you've played enough to where the results are going to stand. And then if you forfeit the last three matches, mm-hmm. who cares because you're not going to make the playoffs and you're getting beat, which, you know, that was kind of the accolades that we had given them all year long was they're losing 20 to nothing and they're still showing up every mm-hmm. week. But it, it's – I think from UPSL's side here is – is in and I know in the playoff bracket that we saw that that had to be adjusted they were hoping to play 
the first round of the playoffs this weekend. But um, how would that have happened? Because you still had teams in the north and everything else that were scheduled out until the 22nd. So, I mean, there was never going to be playoff games. Maybe when they first set the schedule, uh, you know, that was the intention. But mm-hmm. – they, they've known all along that that probably wasn't going to be a reality with, you know, the three week breaks and some of the rainouts and the stadium not being available and some of the reschedules and everything else that they've gone through this year. I guess I just don't see why all of a sudden they hit the button and said <clears throat> all games should be over by this date. Well, that's the question <laughs> you know, that, <laughs> that we can't get answered. So it's, you know, it's, you know, I don't. You know, just just how it went down, it was, you know, like I said here, because, you know. A little premature. Me, premature because, you know, there was, you know, well, they even updated on, on, the, on the site that Capital City was going to forfeit um, against Coyotes, which which pushed um, pushed them ahead of the runners. And I know Mason reached out to me saying, hey, have you, have you seen this, you know, you know, on here? And then. You know, I reached out to you know, you know, my contacts in the league and, and said, "Hey, what's going on?" Because, you know, you know, Bell County forfeiting one to the Runners, one to the Coyotes, it washes. You know, you know, there, there's no harm, no foul on that one there. But you couldn't have Capital City that has a facility to play that, you know, from my understanding, was wanting to play. Um, cause really, you know, that, you know, the Corinthians, you know, as we saw, uh, were able to pull, That's in right. my opinion, an upset to get the tie, mm-hmm. you know, on the road, um, capital city at home, you know, they're two and two, two, one and one at home. So, um, they perform a lot better on, at home than on, you know, on the road. Now to be fair, coyotes are three Oh and one on the road. So it, it should be a fun match. Um, you know, you know, if you're up in the Austin area, it'd be something to kind of go watch and support, you know, support both teams, but, um, it'll be interesting to see how this shapes out. I know Alamo City's, you know, just kind of sitting in the clubhouse. I know, uh, Mason and the runners are itching to get in to, um, if they win most likely, I think what I saw here is, um, they'll get either. Uh, well, actually, no, the, the North is set. Yeah, no, the North is set, Scott. Um, some games haven't been played, but uh, they're already far enough ahead to where it's set. It's going to be Innocentis and at the second spot and, and for a soccer pl- uh, club at the first. And in the South, the, the South is the South has been set for a while with Alameda FC and Houston FC. So, uh, you know, if it's the runners or coyotes are going to be traveling to uh, that you know Houston FC, right? Uh, I, you know, I believe, and you know, I think um, with the schedule being pushed back, uh, you know, with the holidays, I think they're talking about the uh, playoff match to be, you know, the January second weekend, that first weekend in January, uh, for it to kick off. So it'll be interesting. But yeah, the only the only position that's really uh, not set is is, is the uh, Coyotes and Runners. So it should be interesting. Well, you know what? I'm the kind of person that if you can't win, you got to mess it up for everybody else. <laughs> like, That's what here. the Corinthians did. <laughs> the team that I want to win here, just keep scoring goals so that you actually have like 40 to nothing and just completely screw up. Like they could literally, the decision of who is in second place is in their hands. They could have just, they could have just picked and chosen and said, this is who we want to win, and this is what we're going to do. Embrace that's the your, chaos. That's me. So, it's, And then well, the other big news, and, and I guess this is something that Danielle can probably talk to a little bit. Um, it's been a rough week for UPSL because I think it was in the Florida division, mm-hmm. but up in Virginia where um, I think it was world-class premiere that uh, got, I guess it's a forfeit, right? Uh, where um, the parent. a... Father, coach, I think there's kind of that gray line there, ended up punching a referee. Uh, and, you know, the game got called, of course, after that in UPSL and, and um, it said that they're pressing charges. Um, there's been some dispute whether he was actually on the staff or not. I know he was one of the uh, father of one of the one of the players. Um, but it's, it, it, you know, unfortunately... You know, you don't like to see that. I know it was what a couple of years ago. I guess they had an incident in Colorado, uh, you know, similar to similar to that here. So, 
Um, it's something that, you know, I wonder if UPSL is going to have to look at, you know, having a little bit more security, you know, you know, on, you know, on the field and stuff to where you can, you know, make sure that, that the referees are, and players, to be fair, match. referees and players are protected. It's like, it's not in Brazil when they had their ref that got decapitated during the game. <laughs> We can go a whole lot darker. <laughs> a way to go, Rafa. We went from fudge to bam. <laughs> Man, that's happened like in some little South American characters. I remember reading something about that. Oh, uh, the, there's yeah, there's shootings, there's fights. Yeah, but the, but UPSL oh, does need to do some measures to prevent something like that because you, you can never know. In the USP, UP, they need to do something to to make sure that doesn't happen to players and the officials and so forth. And I'll say it's not just a UPSL, but it's all yeah. all divisions of, of soccer and worldwide. Because to be fair, um, you know, I've seen, I've seen, you know, even at the, you know, AJ and Anna's league, you know, you know, where they're playing and kids, you know, parents getting on referees and getting too impersonal. We'll, we'll just say, um, and, and I know the the league that we're in, they actually have a they 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 bring in an off duty sheriff to uh, to be there just in case there is something that does escalate it. And you know that's the sad part about you know today's generation or you know today's society, I guess. Well, and, and so that's, a couple uh, things from an actual technical perspective. So what will be interesting is did this individual parent coach come from the technical area or from the fan side. If they came from the technical area, then as a coach, you are responsible for whatever happens in there, especially now that you can give yellow and red cards. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of if you as a referee don't know who it is, then it's like, Hey, head coach, you got to eat this because if you don't tell me who it was, or, you know, if I can't tell from the 50, you know, coaches. So that's one thing where, as a coach, manager, manage who's on your sideline. And if you don't know who they are and if they're not part of your coaching staff, don't have them there. Don't have someone's friend of a friend because now as a team, you're liable for this person's action because they were in the official area. The other thing I would say is it is amazing how a team um, and a coach have an influence on their parents. Um, th there are some teams who are known for having bad and poor behaved parents. There are teams, I will say SAFC is incredible because they don't tolerate their parents being disrespectful. Um, and you see that across country and you can also look up so many different stories, mm -hmm. um, where I I'll talk to a coach because if parents are getting unruly, I'm not going to have it. Um, so I'll talk to them. And the other day at a game, the, the coach yelled across and just told the parents to zip it, um, you know, and, and that's where it starts. Mm -hmm. If you set an expectation as a, a team and as a club that this is unacceptable um, and that if you, you know, hey, you're, you're going to be fine if, you know, as a fan, you're going to get a card or if you get dismissed, you know, you, you take that right onto it make it make it hurt a little bit but i'm also going to say there have been times where i've had to separate parents at a u11 match mm -hmm. a u11 match i swear someone was going to catch a charge the weekend parents had already been the sheriff had already been called i literally had to look at the parent and say they are not worth you catching a charge um because they were both about to go at it and it was just it, it was it was some of the ugliest side of humanity that i've seen so it happens out there. No one's perfect. I get it. Absolutely. Uh, see me at an SAFC game or something I'm passionate about. Uh, I'll, I'll be out there yelling. Um, but it, it, it also comes back to some of that of, um, and half so the time the time. kids say, oh my God, please, can you just kick my parents out? I'm <laughs> like the kids after the game are like, this is ridiculous. I'm sick of listening to them. Well, and you see even at the high school games too. I mean, even some of the high school games that we go to, and I'm not going to name names or anything like right, right now of teams, but not just at one high school game, but when you're sitting there watching a team and you've been to three or four games and every single game, it's the same type of mentality in the stands. You're absolutely <coughs> right because it's certain schools and, and certain, you know, just the tone that it seems like is set or lack thereof. I've actually been to a game like that 
the, the fans, and I'm not going to say what area of Texas. Um, and it was a it was a it was a playoff game, and they were not only yelling at the refs, but also making fun of the coaches and threatening the coaches and this and that. And that's it got not it got out of hand. And I think the but the coach's responsibility is to kind of remind the parents that hey, we're here for the players. You know, we're here for development. You know, especially at U11, that should not be happening. Yeah. I can understand U12 and up because it is U12. competitive. <laughs> I can't. Not, not to that level. It's it's and even if you're playing competitive, but if you're playing, you know, high school, you know, along those lines, you know, you, you go to any UIW event, you know, you know, they, they give the message, hey, it's it's about sportsmanship and, yeah. and you know, it's okay to be heated a little bit on a call, but you know, you get you gotta still respect, you know, number yeah. one, the opponent and the referees because you know, they're doing their best and, and you know, et cetera. We all know it's it's not like they're, you know, they're, they're making bank doing it. Um, you know, they're volunteering their time and stuff uh, for that here. Now, uh, just to kind of wrap up on the UPSL discussion here, um, Rick uh, from Alamo City uh, did uh, t- uh, chime in and state that Alamo City is going to be playing Innocentus on January 4th at the Alamo Soccer, uh, uh, at the Alamo Sportsplex. Uh, so that will be a, uh, a dandy if you can uh, make some time to go out and support. And, and I know Rick in, in Alamo City puts, up, puts on a good show. Um, they have a, a drink cart that shows up and, and you, know, you can purchase, uh, you know, you know uh, beverages. There's a, um, you, know, a, you know, a field in the back that the, you know, the kids can go run and play. But that will be one uh, in Innocente's, uh, I don't think his last here in San Antonio in the two to three years that they've uh, made the trips down. So maybe Alamo City can be the first one to, to send them back and uh, back up to North Texas with a loss. Yeah, that'll be a, a good matchup. And uh, hopefully they figure out another team for the Hart Division next season because Bell County definitely was not a competitor. Yeah, well, I, I know, uh, you know, Bell County, you know, is not going to be back in the Hart. Um, we do know that Laredo, uh, well, you know, Laredo, uh, what, U23 team? U19. Uh, from the Laredo Heat uh, is scheduled to be in the, uh, scheduled to come into the heart. Uh, I'm assuming that they're still going to have one division, although, you know, Matt, Matt and, and uh, uh, you know, Matt and Brent haven't, uh, you know, sent that out as of yet. Um, but uh, Thomas St. George has a question for Miss Danielle. It says, uh, are you eating nachos? No, pizza. I'm eating the world's smallest pizza. It's like the Domino's thin crust, but you know how they like, and the pieces are about the size of nachos, Thomas. So I'm like, oh God, I hope someone's not counting how many pieces I've eaten. <laughs> <laughs> I got a tally going on our Facebook Live, Danielle. Just keep it up. You're at seven right now. Someone is rewinding as we speak and will be posting how many I've eaten. But it really ended up only being like maybe two slices total. But it's <laughs> really a little. And yes, and Thomas, um, I did have Domino's delivered while the pod has been going on. So <laughs> I need I needed some bread for the for the gin that you're drinking there, the downtown happy gin. Sure. Gin and tonic. There's tonic. Oh, there. oh okay. There's tonic in there. <laughs> I don't, I'm not a straight alcoholic. Really. <laughs> it's, it's not all no, judgment free zone. Judgment free zone. So, <laughs> moving along to uh, some San Antonio FC news. Uh, you guys had the the season ticket member uh, event last night while me and Rafa were out there in the cold. So, uh, tell us about your warm festivities and and all the holiday joy. Uh, we'll start with you, Danielle. <laughs> um, I want to say I appreciated the location. It was super festive, super merry. That's what I want. Um, I got to take a selfie with Santa. So if you follow me on social media, got me a new man. Santa looked um, a little happy to take that picture. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I was having some weathered souls, I think. <laughs> Anyone listening, nope. Anyone under the age of 12, Santa is just very happy. <laughs> I just wanted Christmas for someone. Um It was great. Tim Holt spoke. I love listening to Tim because he always has good communication. He's very articulate and he gives those details that I think the four of us like and appreciate. So I love hearing um, from Tim and hearing his communication. We got to hear from Alan. Um, I got to see my girl, Allie Cook. 
Um, shout out for her again. Um, what else? It was fun. We had a group picture with a bunch of the Crocketeers and some of us other regulars. Um, so just seeing that SAFC family that I've been missing for what, only two months. <laughs> yeah. it looks it like, like a some, lifetime. Some pretty so sweet giveaways and I saw um, some swag bags. Maybe for other people, I think I did walk away with an SAFC unofficial ornament. Um, I will see if I can pull it out. Um, so unofficially, I, I got the hookup. So I loved it. You know what I think would have been fun, too, is doing a uh, like a kit reveal or like a player signing mm-hmm. or something. I think that would have added just a little bit of that specialness or like, hey, we're STM and we got something first that wasn't just public. But I really enjoyed it. I think this has been my favorite, number one, my favorite Christmas party. But I think this has been my favorite season ticket member event so far. Okay. It would have been better if they had players there. <laughs> what we only have one. I, <laughs> well, we now got two under contract. Oh, no, you don't want to set him free in the mobs. He's so little and cute. So, um, He's a grown man, Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> He's not Baby Yoda. <laughs> he can't drink any. No, he cannot drink. No, he cannot drink. <laughs> That's true. Uh, so, but he's adorable, and who doesn't want to... Christmas picture with Pirano instead of Santa? Yeah. I, so I would have loved that because I tried to get a picture with Pirano at the end of last season, but he was kindly escorted off by some nice security people. I mean, I didn't think it looked that much like a stalker, but he must have <laughs> all had my picture. <laughs> That's the one, not her. <laughs> what about... Uh, so, yeah. Good time. Good time. What about you, Harry? I, I know you uh, said that you had a good time last night when we were talking uh, after the event. Yeah, it was, it was it was probably one of the better ones. It was more compact, and I think that's what made it a little bit more special. I enjoyed the ice skating at, at the AT&T Center, and, and, you know, the kids enjoyed it. Um, you know, I really wish they would have it maybe more on a Friday, Saturday night to where, you know, you could, you know, you know, where you could bring the family. I know it's the last week of school before Christmas break, but it was a Monday. So I couldn't have AJ and Anna out till you know, what I left after Monday. nine o'clock yeah. uh, on there. So, but it, to me, it, how it was all close, everybody was in, a, was mingling together. Um, I, I thought it, I thought it was really good. Um, I know, you know, I got to, you know, speak to Alan. Uh, I got to speak to Tim, you know, I got to, you know, speak with the Copa Tejas people. Um, Miss Danielle and, and <laughs> you <mean> her. Me. <laughs> <laughs> and Steve. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm not taking there. anything away from Steve. It maybe in the flash, just. <laughs> but it, but it was, yeah. But that, to me, that's important. And, and like I said, here we we're able to kind of, you know, discuss and um, bounce off ideas. And 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 to me, you got to speak with all the season ticket, you know, season ticket representatives and and you know the staff to thank them, you know, for you know, for the year that they had. Um, but I think it was a, a really good opportunity for season ticket members to provide feedback to Tim and Alan uh, directly. Um, and, and I think, you know, from, you know, from, in spe- you know, speaking with uh, Tim and, and Miguel, um, you know, and listening to others, the, the interaction between the team and the fans, I think is a little bit more, focus this year now i know every year they say that but i get the feeling this year there's a little bit more behind it than than in the past where it was just hey yeah we're going to do something and then it just fades away i think this year and i even you know even talked to um luis and preston i was like this year's a big year for you know for you guys especially on the communication side because you can't go radio silent you know over over the you know over the winter You've got to still continue to, to build, you know, to, you know, to build that momentum, um, you know, for that here. So I think, I think, you know, as an organization, they understand that they got some work to, to rebuild, uh, you know, from missing the playoffs here. Um, it'll be interesting to see the team that they put, put together uh, for that here, you know, you know, cause they're going to have to put together a team fairly quick. Cause 
um, for that here. Um, we got trials schedule, coming up. Just, yeah, just for schedule wise, nice. uh, from my understanding, <laughs> that's probably going to be coming out probably after the first of the year. Uh, maybe you know first games towards the end, but with and it's to be expected with Miami FC coming on board. Um, you know the schedules got kind of pushed back. I know League One came out with uh, uh, their home openers today, but uh, so schedule wise, uh, if you're like me that that sometimes or okay all the time tries to schedule vacation around you know SAFC matches um, for that here. So yeah, that'll probably be after the first of the year uh, before that comes out. Yeah, and to your point, Harry, I, I think you're absolutely right regarding the whole family aspect and everything that, that San Antonio FC is really trying to promote this year. I don't think it's just lip service like in the past, and I think you almost see evidence of that. I, I know I saw a picture posted. I think it was actually from Thomas of the different STM scarves that you could vote on this year, and mm-hmm. I think like two out of the four actually said like mm-hmm. SAFC family on the actual scarf design. Um, I almost wonder... You know, I, I get the family aspect, but does it feel like a little bit too minor league at some point when, when you try and promote this whole SAFC family, SAFC family, like to where it's maybe more something you'd see from, say, the missions or, or something like that? Rafa, I see you nodding your head. So what are your thoughts, buddy? I think, I think we can go beyond like that. And I like to see front office do more stuff, like especially when, you know, when Cardiff came to play. Mm-hmm. You know, where are the commemorative scarves like Carter versus SAFC? Where are the they didn't think about it. They didn't they think, didn't about, think that. about it. I at the match, I told them I was like, "Hey, you guys missed an opportunity. You could have had a S- half SAFC, half Cardiff scarf on there." And they're like, "That's a great idea. We'll 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 take it back." They didn't. No. They didn't. You can have one like a, a separate discussion. For, yeah, we have a scarf <laughs> for when we play RGV, when we play Austin, when we play El Paso. You know and Maybe we can have the Copa Chile with, with New Mexico United or something like that. You know? I mean, I think they need to think, start thinking low level and think big. And I think maybe that'll attract more, you know, maybe get more respect and more fans in there. I know we had a rough year, this, you know, this past year, in which we should have made the playoffs. But but those little things, like, when we, like Harry mentioned, is, you know, we need to step it up and, but it's not even missing the playoffs. It's I think they missed the mark with the fan yeah. engagement. The the fan engagement because we all we all understand it's a game. Results go one way or another. But the thing that they control is the fan engagement aspect of it. And in in my opinion, in in several uh, interactions with various season ticket members. It's that fan engagement that's gone down. You know, especially from the Scorpion years to SAFC's first year to now it's, it's gone down each year. They've got to reverse that trend. So one of the interesting things is I was, I don't know whether I was watching something or with all the world cup stuff, one of the things that they were talking about in terms of soccer is soccer truly is grassroots. Mm -hmm. So even the big teams, the national teams, they were all going out to communities, to schools. So soccer is kind of built differently than the NFL and the NBA where soccer truly is the players coming to the fans where I think some of the other professional sports we have, it's the fans coming to the players. Um, And you can just kind of look at historically in terms of the larger um, teams, at least in our country where, where it was that connection, where it was, that's how women's soccer started is Michelle Akers, Mia Hamm getting off buses and being like, we want to go there. We're talking to this girl's camp. And so that's how we know soccer. So if you're trying to change the paradigm on us where it's now we have to come to the fans, it it doesn't work like that. And I think that's one of the things I do appreciate about the Athenians is they're in the community and you see them in the community. You see what they're doing. I think it's one of the reasons why Michael Hood has resonated so much with fans. He's in the community. He's engaging. He's talking about what he's doing. He's building that relationship. And he may not always be out in the community, but through Instagram and social media, it's a dialogue and a conversation. He built relationship. It's not just a post. And I expect you to see it, which I think teams get sucked into. It's this is a relationship. This is me wanting to share personally about who I am with my fans, which is now my family. And so I just think sometimes new ownerships and people who want to get involved in soccer, they don't understand that. But even the big teams, 
um, I was reading um, Das Reboot, and it talks about Thomas Mueller, World Cup winner on Bayern Munich, who has many accolades to his name. He goes and attends supporters groups meetings, Mm -hmm. but that is a club expectation. And to me, if Bayern Munich is doing it one with some of the most expensive players and and some of the the biggest pedigree and, and traditions, they're sending their players to supporters groups and, and, and they so brought his brother on the staff even well, you know what what I mean? and Rafa had a chance to meet him he's one of the most down-to-earth people mm-hmm. like and to your point when we were out there in Houston you know to have an mm-hmm. open practice that's open to fan clubs here in America that it wasn't a charge it's like me and Rafa paid 150 or 200 bucks to go watch a private scrimmage no they invited supporter groups to come out and watch a free practice after the match and have a meet and greet with the players and if to your point, if Bayern Munich can do that in Houston, you know, granted, it was a, a fan event. I get that. But I, I think sometimes, to your point, you know, it's so organic that you have to build that, that just trying to force, like, family down our throats now all of a sudden this season, it's got to be more than just that. I don't think it's lip service. I don't think it's San Antonio FC front office saying this without backing up any action, but somehow it's got to be organic to your point. It's got to be more grassroots than just FO making a season ticket member scarf that says family on it and saying, see, we're promoting family this year. Bring your family. And Byron Munich just doesn't do that in the States. That's actually what they do with their supporters group over in Munich. Right. That's, so that's an established thing that that's the culture there that they brought here. So they're doing that with their own personal supporters, which is just going to generate more interest, more social media, more warm, fuzzy feeling um, from us. Agreed, 100%. Well, also San Antonio FC News, uh, we kind of touched on it at the beginning of the show with our intro post or whatever, but uh, we have another signing uh, bringing back Ebenezer Akon. I want to make sure I say that right. Uh, For a defensive player, uh, you know, we had kind of talked about and graded him uh, at our show at the end of last season. And uh, that is not a nacho chip. That is a pizza that looks like a nacho chip. <laughs> and, and he was kind of one of those that I, I think, you know, if memory serves me correctly, it, it was like a, a B, you know, right in that area mm-hmm. where it wasn't somebody that we just thought was, you know, the bee's knees or anything like that to go a little bit old school. Uh, but Harry, we'll start with you on this one, buddy. Uh, you know, what did you think about bringing uh, Akon back? I love it. I, I, you know, that was his first year as a profession and um, me and Royce were kind of debating on uh, who, who was going to be the second player uh, that was going to be back. And unfortunately that wasn't on my list. I, I thought it might've been, you know, Leo Torres, uh, you know, you know, somebody like that, you know, another young guy. Um, unfortunately, Evie didn't even, you know, cross my mind, which is shame on me. Uh, cause he was a third round pick by the Chicago fire last, last year that, uh, SAFC was able to sign. So, um, I'm, I'm glad that they picked up his option. Um, it'll be interesting to see where he plays, uh, in talking with Royce, uh, he thinks he's probably a better center back, um, than playing left back, uh, for that here. But, uh, you know, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that goes, but, uh, with Pirano, uh, with, um, with Ebby, um, you got that good start of a youth foundation. Um, obviously, they're going to need to bring in probably a little bit more veteran experience somewhere uh, up front. Um, and then, of course, you know, you know, there's what nine other spots. They got to bring in a little bit of everything, right? <laughs> still, <laughs> but you know, there's still nine other open spots. You know, but uh, in Pirano, you know, that equals championship already. So you know, you add Evie into there. There's, you know, we we should just you know. You know, cancel the season but uh, well you know <laughs> we talked about it yesterday or whatever kind of to your point you know about who it might be and I, I know my thought was kind of maybe Cardoni or, or one of the more you know regular I, di- I didn't think it was going to be anybody huge you know I figured it would kind of be somebody that they were mm-hmm. able to bring back but <clears throat> Ebby wasn't one of them that I had considered you know I think fans probably would have gotten excited over Green I, I think they're excited to hear that Ebby's back uh but, you know, I, I kind of thought that maybe Cardoni or somebody like that, that might be one of the easier deals to get. I done. wonder if Cardoni's coming back, though. That, There's I mean, a reason I'm the Scotsy left. I'm kind of on the island on that, but... 
There's a reason, in my opinion, that Viscasi left. So either he left because it was more money to go in the second division to go play over there, or if he had a shot at being the starting goalkeeper for San Antonio FC this year, I don't think he would have just left. Hmm. Unless it was for more money. I mean, money talks. Plus, like, girls in Sweden are are cuter over there, too, probably. (laughs) (laughs) What are you trying to say? Honestly, honestly, I thought the signing would be Pekka. I thought thought Pekka's the anchor of our defense. Yeah, I want to bear off of Royce because he swore up and down it was going to be Pekka, and I was like, no, it's not. Yeah, I thought uh, thought it would be Pekka, or I thought maybe LaHood. Cardoni? I thought LaHood was an option. Yeah, uh, Cardoni, you know, I mean, no, he, he didn't have a bad season. It's just we just had a bad defense, you know. And I was surprised into the signing, the second signing, but um, that's a whole other issue there. But um, but I think Cardoni, I think, has earned his spot. And I guess with our backup leaving, I think it shows that maybe Cardoni might be coming back, you know, for, for another season. I mean, he's he's been consistent. I mean, he's – He's not flashy. He's, we're not going to have that flashy goalkeeper like Jose Jorge Campos, you mm-hmm. know, but he gets the job done, you know, and hopefully they do put him a, a defense that can, will help him out and not give up a bunch of goals. You know, I think that was the problem this past season. Well, and I think he has roots in San Antonio, you know, with his ties to Trinity and what he's done kind of here in the local community. And I, I thought it was pretty cool. He was actually out there at a Diego's goalkeeper camp. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you talk about, um, oil and water or whatever from a fan's perspective, you know, at the end of the day, these are all people. And Cardoni was actually out there helping train uh, for, for Diego's camp when they were having that there at Trinity. So I know they have a lot of deals they got to get done. And that was the only reason why I thought Cardoni might be that next one, because he seems like he's just kind of one of those likely candidates that, you know, you, you could take for granted almost that he's coming back. Uh, but to your point, Harry, like you said, uh, so far really only two players under contract. So everybody's up for grabs in all honesty. Uh, what about you, Daniel? What were your thoughts on the signing, or, or who were you kind of hoping that that it might be? I like that we have a couple um, people coming back, and especially defensively. I, I'm hoping that we have at least one or two more defenders because you have to learn who's stepping, when they're stepping, um, the the runs that they're going to make, how to cover them, <laughs> when those runs. I, I I think that's the only way we're going to have that good communication and cohesion between defense and goalkeeper is having a couple of those people who've worked together. Um, I also think that we can't rebuild every year. Mm-hmm. Like, yes, we're going through a rebuilding year. But to me, it sometimes feels like we go through that every year. I, I would think that we would only need to replace a few holes. A, a few stars. Yeah. Or, or, hey, you know what? We can't do an Open Cup and a USL run. We need to build our bench a little mm-hmm. more. Let's get a couple college players in, um, former college players for that. Um, depth. Smaller salary, have that depth. Someone's going to get injured, but also to train them mm-hmm. and maybe have them. They killed us last year, this yeah. past year. No doubt. But I think, but we, well, okay, so here's something that we re-signed a, a defender had the most own goals on us. Think about that. Liverpool signed Love, re-signed Lovren, and he was a mess before. Now look at him with next to Virgil Van Dyke. He's a superhero. Yeah, but you have yeah, you're oh, a coach. Oh. That's the difference. <laughs> and, and that's why I think though, I think fans are excited to see his progression. To Harry's point, that's you me. know, it was his first season. Um, so obviously he made some mistakes. The own goals were the the big ones, and he was hit or miss a little bit. You know, he'd have his great games and then he'd he'd come out and play not so hot. Um, but luckily for him, he's not one of those veteran players where you expect the ceiling to kind of grow and his progression to get better. Not, oh, he should already be at the peak. This is as good as he's going to get, you know? Maybe that's a job for Marcina. Maybe, like I said, to really kind of develop him. I mean, and if he does develop him, that's great, you know? Well, that's what we question with Coach Powell is you look at the team on paper, where where is the growth, uh, you know, growth of the team from the start of the season to the end of the season? And, and you know, with, with Marcina, I think with his history, you know, you know, he has a little bit better proven track record. Now we got to dust off that 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 resume a little bit to, to see how he does. You know, and it's a different know, level. USLC time. It's a different level, but I, I think 
I think that'll be the, you know, as, as a, as a fan perspective here to try to see, you know, how much growth that, that, you know, you're going to be able to see from, you know, you know, and it goes for Pirano as well, mm-hmm. you know, the growth from, <laughs> you know, his first year, because people have, people, have, people have seen him now he's on film. They're going to have an off season to be able to kind of look and see what he does and, and to see if the ways to kind of counteract it. And, and both, you know, Ebby and, and Pirano are going to have to, you know, continue to work with Marcina and the staff and, and, you know, uh, you know, to, to, you know, to take it to that next level. And that's so important. Right. That's important too there because, and in order for them to develop, you got to build, you got to bring in players to kind of, all right, you want to hurt us. You want to hurt us here? Well, we're going to get you a player that's going to hurt you another way. Back. I think that's, that's the direction they need as far as building a team and adding depth and so forth. So that way, it eases the pressure off of Pirano that we don't have to depend on him. You know, it's a kind of an equal share around the team as far as goals and distribution of the ball. I Do think that's what, what that's the, the goal for this upcoming season. It has to be that in order for him to grow. And Daniel, what were your, did you have some final thoughts or anything else you wanted to touch on for the, for the signing before <laughs> well, we move I on? I just said Mr. Snuggles is away, Carrie. <laughs> because cats are also the secondary top of, of the show. <laughs> oh. That's okay. Your, your well, soccer IQ outweighs your, your cat <laughs> mentions. Thank you. So. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> Got to keep it balanced. To Scott, because I can be a hot mess. So, <laughs> well, we also had some uh, Christmas gift ideas that we want to get into. We may not have a show, or we probably won't have a show on Tuesday next week, just with the holidays and everything. Uh, pending some kind of outrageous signing or, or San Antonio FC news, uh, but Danielle had a, a list of um, some good gifts for uh, the soccer fan. In your life. So, uh, Danielle, why don't you uh, take it away with our, our next segment? So, these are all books I've read. This comes from my personal collection. I'm also a bit of a nerd, love to read. <clears throat> so, this is for the soccer fan and all of us. If you love the Women's World Cup, if you loved the international players, this is also probably one of the most well written books. It's probably like in the top five or 10 for me of just in general. So it's well-written. Um, it covers players from the U S so you'll get some U S stories, but then it talks about players like Amadine Henri and you get their backstories. Um, some players from Africa and it's just amazing. Um, so if you can't get enough or if you have a daughter or a young lady or, um, an older lady or just a woman in your life, or you just want to know more about women's soccer internationally, this is the best book, and I know Chris Hockman also recommended it. So um, this just should be on your shelf. It's just a good book. So this is for um, the soccer fan and everyone who loves a good Women's World Cup and cannot wait for it to come back. Yeah. Or that so special this, lady in your life. Yes. Or just if you like to read or if you like soccer, it's a good book. So this next one is for the USL manager or the MLS manager on your Christmas list, but you're really not sure what to get them. But they're wondering why is my stadium only half full? And so uh, I am a big fan of Grant Wall and Andy Markovitz, and this is Sportista. It is absolutely phenomenal. It is almost like a research document. So this is well-researched, well-cited. But if you're wondering why your stadium's half full, it's because the other half of us, you're not marketing to. So you can fill your stadium by marketing to 100% of your population, to all of our coaches. Now, for the person in your life who's struggling with their national federation, huh. I'm not sure whether they should make the federation um, – make their entire country's club team, first division team, all geared around one nationality, or you're just a mess and your your employees are suing you. Um, <laughs> DOS Reboot is for that person, <laughs> um, just to give them a little bit of a, hey, take some pointers here from people who were a mess and fixed it and won a World Cup. I would just be happy if we took enough pointers to get to a World Cup, which who knows what the past would be like. 
And oh, wow. For the badass in your life, this, I literally read it in one day. Look at it. It's teeny, tiny, skinny. Harry, you're getting this for your daughter. FYI. Okay. Um, this is a great leadership book. So it's written okay. by Abby Wambach. If you don't know who she is, you've lived under a rock. She's currently the international holder on goal scored. She has surpassed, uh, well, she, Ronaldo's trying to achieve her record. Um, someone said he had the most international goals. Sorry, Abby Wambach passed that. Christine Sinclair is only a few away from breaking that. It is a wonderful leadership book, and it's talking about how some of the dynamics have changed from 50 years ago and some of the different things to do and really just how to be a good leader. And there's so much that just spoke to me. I was like underlining it. If you saw my Snapchat, I put some little, little blurbs there, but for the badass in your life or someone who's a leader or someone who has some potential and you're like, you're like, she's awesome. Um, I would get this. This is also just good reading. If you want to know about Abby Wambach um, and her leadership, so that is the Christmas gift list that I want to leave for you all. So if you haven't bought something yet for Christmas, you are a little behind, but I'm sure Amazon Prime can get them there to you at your house in no time. Plug for Amazon mean, there's Prime. There's still uh, a week till Christmas. What are you talking about? Hey. Yeah, don't get <laughs> from, like, New Year's. Question on the uh, Abby Wambach book, just because I think that's really interesting. I have a couple nieces. Uh, as far as like who it's written for, would that be safe for like a 10 year old or something like that? Or is there any like foul language or? or... No, no foul okay. language. Um, she's honest about who she is. Sure. I read both her memoir and who she is. So if you were depending on sometimes your religion or maybe your personal beliefs, she does share she did marry Glennon Doyle, who is now her wife, and they have three kids. So she does mention that. Um, so that's the only thing, but it's just who she is. Right. The same way I drink tea and pizza that looks like nachos. I just want to make sure you know sometimes the language and stuff like that that they use no. just being adults is a little bit different. No, this is truly written from a leadership perspective awesome. from someone who recognizes that her fan base does include 10 year olds. Um, to a hundred year olds and probably gotcha. even younger than that. So, um, and she has her own children and her nieces and nephews. So she really is, um, but no, it's a very clean, it's super easy read. Um, and there's just eight little, um, uh, tips or words of wisdom. And it's all based on her Barnard, uh, convocation speech that went viral. So if you're not sure, maybe pop that on and kind of see the, the tone and, this is all based on that and her leadership company that she has. But yeah, awesome. awesome. I, I don't think it would any age would can read this. It gotcha. should read. Well, thank you very much for those gift giving ideas, Danielle. That was uh, fantastic. Uh, so, moving into our final thoughts for the evening. Again, uh, probably no show next week with the holidays. Uh, but Rafa, let's swing it back around to my top left over here. Uh, what are your final thoughts for today's show? Uh, final thoughts, like I said. Uh, Hearing up for the high school season, looking forward to it. See who's going to be king of the hill for 6A here in San Antonio, or really for Region 4 and also for Region 5A as well. So, you know, go out there, support your teams, go watch some great soccer out there. You know, we got some great tournaments coming up in the, game, the first weekend of the new year. And then um, just shout out to all the players. Good luck to everyone out there on the season. And so my club players are playing <laughs> their, their respective teams. Good luck to you guys. I'll be out there watching you guys, making sure you're not making any mistakes. <laughs> I'm not. I'm gonna pull you after the game and, and lecture you how I taught you how to play. And, I love it. And then just shout out to a friend of mine. Um, congratulations to a friend of mine. His name's Javier Ovalle. He won. These teams won a couple of tournaments this past weekend in shirt. So I'm in my hometown in Del Rio, which I'll be there in a couple of weeks. I'm sure. Their soccer, high school soccer teams rolled through about me coming back. <laughs> All that coaching you'll be doing from up in the stands, man. Well, the, the, I, when I'm here, they're, they're, they've been yelling my name, and they're not too happy about it. <laughs> back. So, no, we I'll got Rafa them, locked up on the round table. Yeah, I'll send them the, the Soccer for Dummies coaching book. For them. <laughs> <laughs> One more for your gift giving for that guy that doesn't know yeah. anything, right? Yeah. Uh, what about you, Harry? Uh, any final thoughts for tonight's show? Yeah, so my final thoughts here, you know, with, with uh, you know, with the uh, season getting ready to kick off here, um, 
Louisville City did a new logo rebrand. Um, you know, when you, Sorry. you know, so so far, you know, Tulsa did a rebrand where you know they did a total changeover. The FC Tulsa logo looks, I think, cleaner. It's different. You know, Bethlehem Steel Swope Park went to the two team route with you know under Union and Sporting KC. It is what it is. Mm-hmm. Uh, the battery came out with a real slick new logo uh, as far as for that. Real clean, real light. Um, right up there with Tulsa. Uh, the switchbacks, you know, you know, at the breaking of their new stadium, kind of leaked the, their their new logo that's going to be for when the stadium opens up in 2021. Clean. It's a little bit to grow on me. But then you have Louisville City, who had a, a good logo, historic, and then... I don't know what the hell happened with this one here. They were drunk uh, at PJ Mahoney's and drew it on a bar napkin. Uh, you know, you, you got the little the little stars that don't fit in. It's 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 a mess. And coming from Louisville City, which is a class organization, it looks cheap, which is anything but what Louisville City. So if you're gonna rebrand, you know, talk to Mike Pendleton. You know, uh, you know he can help do it. There's people that can do a better job. You know, I saw Ford Madison do, you know, a little drawing one on social media today. It was better than Louisville City's. You got to do it right, you, you know, especially where they're going into a new stadium. Everything's go, going great. And then you trash it with, with the new logo. I'm sorry. That was uh, very well said. I, I think I even saw uh, somebody on the USL fan page who had done a better job than what Louisville did. Just size just it up. To... How, how do you cut is. off five of your damn stars? It's it's. <sighs> I'm with you 100%, Harry. I'm, I'm with you, buddy. So I had so much Kentucky bourbon, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's stupid about it is they had a, a logo that leaked that that looked like, you know, the, the barrels, you know, through there and, and, you know, they got hammered for it. It's better than this one, you know, but yeah. Hey, it's, I'm glad I got my Louisville city scarf with the old, old logo. Save that. It's going to be worth a lot of money on eBay one day. (laughs) I'm telling you. What about you, Danielle? Final thoughts for tonight's show before Christmas. I love high school soccer. So I'm super excited that it's starting. I think um, the fans or behind the school and the players. So I love seeing that camaraderie. Um, I love hearing the chants and hearing that whole thing. Um, but I'm also super excited to have time off so that I don't have to be in the cold. Although I am going to another cold place. I'm going back home to Buffalo and Rochester, New York. Um, and so I'm super excited to see family and friends. And literally the next day I get back and we're, we're back into it. But Um, I love it and wouldn't have it any other way. And I'm excited about um, the SAFC season. Um, I know I was accused of being slightly mob mentality, carrying a pitchfork. (coughs) St. George. Um, Not calling anyone out, not naming names or anything. Um, You know, but I do really appreciate and I'm super excited about the season. I'm always so hopeful. Um, I don't think at one time ever will you hear me say I'm giving up my season tickets um, I just love the sport too much in general. And so um, I said my piece and now I get to say my piece on whatever next thing comes out. But the last thing I want to leave with is Aww. Merry Christmas backwards. So, so sweet. Well, this has been the San Antonio soccer <laughs> Roundtable. What's life without goals? We out. <laughs>